What's up guys, it's Minx, and today we're going to be taking a look at, of course we're on the wrong project here, um, something called ModSync. It is a new mod I uh, uh, just built today, um, and it's still an alpha, still very early, but uh, the concept is very strong, um, and the principle is there, I think. So um, we're going to take a look at it, look how it works, look how a developer can implement it um, into their own mod. That way um, it can be, I guess, supported um, and utilized across the board. Um, so um, let's take a look at things, see what's going on here. So starting off towards the top, nothing really crazy going on. We just got a string of mod URLs and mod names. Um, when the uh, server starts and the mod gets loaded, I'm thinking about moving this because it's not a soft dependency. So what happens is it could potentially load before some mods, which could be an issue. Um, so at some point we may move the Git plugins to uh, something further down the line um, where it uh, guarantees that the plugins that it gets are uh, all the plugins that they have. Um, but for now, um, Git plugins calls there. It prints it, no need. Um, but what Git plugins does is it goes into the chain loader and it gets all the plugin infos. And for each plugin, we broadcast a message which tells it to call the mod you a call you um, excuse me calls to mod URL method. Um, it passes the instance of this object through. Uh, no, not objects, the static reference uh, of this uh, through. And it says we don't require a receiver, um, so it's going to send it out um, even if it can't find a receiver. Um, so um, theoretically, that should cover issues. If not, because um, to be honest, I didn't really read the docs on it. I just figured that made sense because not all mods are going to have this implemented. If we do, for whatever reason, get an exception or an error, um, it's going to skip that mod by catching the error and just not doing anything with it. Um, you know, if the mod doesn't implement it, um, then maybe it doesn't need to be synced anyway. If it's a client side mod, who cares? Um, so it's going to download mods. Um, and that's when it moves into, uh, so this moves into another mod, which that mod essentially, we'll, we'll look at it, but essentially all that mod does is say, hey, here's my URL and here's my, uh, here's my name, here's the name of this mod. That's all it does. So when it gets that, get mod URL and name, it just gives us a URL and a mod name. Um, we store that mod info. And in here. Um, right now, the only checking it does is if the mod URL all exists, already exists, because what can happen is it'll call uh, that method multiple times on a plugin for some. Not sure why exactly, um, but it is what it is. Um, so it returns, it skips it if it's already added. If it's not already added, it goes ahead and adds them. Um, and if it fails for whatever reason, it just says it fails. Um, so we can see here, I got a couple comments here. These comments are super important. Um, and this one, not so much. This just outlines how to implement. Um, but um, we can do more checking for security here in the future. E.g. if it's not a certain type of URL, ignore it. Uh, that way we can avoid malicious URLs. However, this is a this is what the server would be doing. So if a server player who wanted to get malicious code onto someone else's machine, um, they could modify this one and prevent it. I would still implement stuff here, um, but um, we can't rely on it. Uh, what would be more reliable here is the download mods method. So before it goes in to download it, it's like, what is this URI or URL? Um, and it's like, okay, uh, this seems suspicious. We're going to ignore it, um, which is you know where this comes into play. The only way to get this to be messed up on a client machine is if you have distributed a malicious copy of this mod. Um, so that would be something to be concerned about, super uh, worrying um, if someone were to start to, uh, distributing malicious copies of this. But for now, um, this is where I would uh, definitely focus on implementing security features on the URL. Um, I know uh, focusing on making sure we do Thunderstore only. Right now, this doesn't th uh, support Thunderstore. It doesn't really support anything. It supports a direct download uh, of the exact mod. Uh, so literally, it takes a uh, the exact mod name uh, or the exact mod URL. Like if you were to click on that link, it would download something that lead to a page. Uh, so baby steps, right? This is alpha. So um, so anyway, it, this, the host doesn't do this part. The host stores the mod info. Then when the host goes in to start a game, um, firstly, I, this is kind of a joke, but also I think it's uh, worth doing. Um, it sets test data to boop. Checking if boop is, or if test data is equal to boop is the check to see if the server implements the mod. Um, and then it wasn't originally my plan. I was just testing. I was like, well, 
this actually makes sense. Um, so we do that. Um, and then we also set mod names to a string of the list of mod names only separated by spaces. And then same thing for mod URLs. Um, so then moving on, uh, what does the client do? So the client stirs up their game. Now, right now, it doesn't check for what mods they have installed, but it does get them. So in the future, we're going to be doing that checking against that to see, hey, do I actually need to download this mod? This mod exists. Um, so um, it uh, doesn't really do much in here otherwise. So we'll move on to when it joins a game, because this is where this magic happens on the client side. Um, so um, in here, when you look at uh, lobby slot on lobby data refresh, because if we look at the uh, thing here, so I originally patched join lobby after verifying because it's like, okay, we've got the lobby object. Um, if we're joining it after verifying it exists. Obviously, we have it. No, we don't. It's got to refresh it. It actually calls a refresh here, and it has to wait until it's done. And that's when on lobby data refresh is complete, essentially. Uh, when, when the information exists, that's actually why it takes a few seconds to uh, join a server. Um, we can use that information from lobby. So once we're in here, uh, we I did a prefix here, so it does it gathers that information before the lobby actually does anything. Um, so we go in here and we say, okay. Do, uh, firstly, it prints it just for testing, of course, but um, it says, does boop exist? Yes. Um, go ahead and get the mod names and mod URLs. It splits them back up into the lists that we had originally made them as, but we uh, converted them to strings to send them over so that I can bring it back. Um, it checks the list count because if the list counts are bad, that means someone added a space somewhere like a dickhead. Um, just that's what they are. Um, so it has improper formatting on the mods. Um, it's still going to go through and download the, one the ones that it can. Um, but if, for example, you have five mods and six mod names because someone had a space in their mod name that means um it's going to download five mods with one bad mod name um if you have six mod urls and five mod names somehow you're going to get um i don't even know it's gonna you're gonna get like five mods and then like a six one's gonna fail to download because the method's gonna fail because there's no name that it's going to toss an error um, so you're still going to get five mods so uh for now the, the the error handling is just what it is it doesn't really do much else than that um so that's how the mod works fairly simple um then the client goes in and says all right for each mod download it and it works um it does function i went in and tested with someone as ho as client and they were host with the mods that had the uh, correct function implemented so now we're going to go take a look at how the mod uh how to implement this into your own mod um really quickly it's real quick and easy so now we're going to open up a project where i have implemented it uh, so project or solution and i'll just do the tutorial one because this is one of the ones i tested um, save um, so a non-static public void called mod url with a mod sync plugin name this whatever you want um, you so you need to reference my mod i could not get around that could not find a way to get around it at the moment maybe there's a way around it no idea um because i hate to have everyone require my mod it would be cool but <laughs> i don't think that's fair to everyone um if there's a way to not get around it maybe we can implement that but for now um it'll say sender dot get mod url and name and um it sends in the you direct url to it and the name note again no spaces on the name no spaces in the url url should have spaces anyway um and the name of it should be formatted as name.dll. However you want to name it, the DLL can be named whatever you want. It should probably be unique, otherwise it's going to cause issues. Um, but that.dll, because it's literally going to name that when it does it. And it's going to put it in the correct folder. So that's how you implement it. I'm going to move on to showing where it goes and all that stuff and how uh, to hot load it. Um, so if we come into here, I have two plugins. I have my LC mod sync and I have script engine. I am planning on potentially getting script engine out of here and implementing it directly in my mod but for now we have script engine script engine allows us to hot load it so what happens is um when you download the mods they go into scripts they don't go into plugins and what uh, script engine does is it'll hot load them so there's two ways you can go about hot loading um by default you have to hit a button um, I may end up including a bundle of this that does not require a button by default. Um, so we have auto reload, 
um, which is watches the script directory for file changes and automatically roads all plugins if any of the files get changed, at removed, or modified. And by default, it's false. Um, we set that to true. What it'll do is it will hot load those mods after they get added to that folder. Um, there's a three second delay by default. I think that's perfectly fine. I don't think that needs to change. Um, and then there's the button that does it manually. So if you hit F6. I want to implement this in my own thing. Um, I'll look in to see how I can do it. But for now, script engine is where it's at. So that is it for this. Um, I'll leave links to script engine, the GitHub, and all that stuff down in the description. Thank you for watching. And if you do test it out, if any mod developers test it out, running any bugs, please share. Um, we'll be happy to see about getting this fixed up. But otherwise, have a wonderful day.